Okay, welcome uh, to question 11 from your tutorial sheet 4. Yeah, so in the previous question, which is question 10, I was making a mistake saying this is tutorial sheet 3, it's tutorial sheet 4 for polynomials. So the way you answer question 11 is similar to the way you answer question 5, though I answered question 5, there uh, is no problem. So I think if, um, yeah, let me just do it quickly because there is no difference from the way you answer question 10 and question 5 and 11, they are almost the same. So question 11 is saying that we find the coordinates of the points where this cuts the uh, y-axis. How do you find the point where it cuts the y-axis? We know to say in the y-axis, we know to say in the y-axis the value of x is equal to 0. So in the y-axis the value of x is equal to 0. So meaning while there is x there I put 0 and then you find to say the value of y would just be equal to 6. So this is where th at 6 that's where the curve is going to cut the, uh, the y-axis and then it's going to so yeah and then it's going to cut the x-axis when y is equal to 0. So we know to say in the x-axis we know to say in the x-axis uh, the value of y is equal to 0. So meaning while there is y here, just put a 0. When you put a 0 there, it means that you are going to factorize this yeah, to find the zeros. So we said in the, the y-intercept is just y is equal to uh, 6. And then to find the x-intercepts, let's put a 0 there. So let's use trial error method to find the factors there. So when you, when you use trial error method, you are going to discover that the first value of x that you are going to have is uh, negative 1. So you use synthetic division or long division to factorize. So we put our negative 1 there, then we write our, uh, our coefficients uh, there. Then this is what you are going to have. Then when you bring down this one, you multiply negative 1 times 1, you get negative 1. You, when you add them, you are getting 5. Negative 1 times 5, you get negative 5. When you add them, you are getting 6. Negative 1 times 6, you get negative 6. When you add them, you are getting 0, which implies that our, our values of, uh, what's this? Our values of, uh, our, our value of x there is correct. It's a factor of that polynomial. So let's now write our first value of x is x plus 1 when you take this negative 1 to the other side of the equal sign so you're going to have something like this and then our resulting quadratic equation is this one which is just x uh, squared plus 5 x plus 5 x and then plus 6 so from there c is going to be equal to 0 then from there you factorize this so when you factorize that you are going to have something like this so you're going to have something like this x plus 2 there and x plus 3 so you get this to 0 you are going to have the first value of x to be the first value of x is going to be equal to uh, negative 1. The second one, x is going to be equal to negative 2. And then the last one, x is going to be equal to negative 3. So from there, what you are going to have now is uh, this. Uh, you, you can now, I think, sketch because you have found the points at which the curve cuts the x-axis, which are these points. So we can now sketch. So our sketch is going to be like this. Let me just draw it this way. Since I only have negative x values there, so I'll draw it like this. Then this is where my zero is. 
and then that is going to be my negative 3 this will be negative 2 then that will be negative 1 and then from there we're going to have now to 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 what's this to analyze the polynomial the leading coefficient there is positive and uh, we have the leading coefficient there which is positive so it's going to be uh, positive yeah like that and then we have an odd power so meaning it's going to start like that and end like that so our curve is going to start like that it passes at 2 and passes there and it is going to proceed at and cut, cut, cut the y axis at 6 so why it's cutting the y axis you name that point as 6 because that's our y intercept so from there we can now find uh, the last part which is uh, stating the range of values for which y is uh, less than 0 okay so here what we're just going to use are the x intercepts so the x intercepts that we found where x is equal to negative 1 x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to negative 3 so i'm going to draw a real line here yeah a number line okay so we're going to put these numbers we have negative 3 we have negative 2 and we have negative 1 so all numbers this side we know to say these numbers on this side are less than uh, this is x is less than uh, negative 3 the numbers between negative 3 and 2 we are going to write it like that numbers between negative 2 and uh, negative 1 will be denoted by that and then these values of x greater than uh, negative 1 are all this side so you can try it now to start testing so if you remember very well we had a point which was like this uh, it was x uh, plus 1 and then this point was also like x plus 2 and then we also had x we also had x plus 3 also had x plus 3 and then we were told that y is less than 0 so you put this like that and then from there what you do now is uh, you begin to test the points try to get any numbers that is any number that is uh, less than negative 3 you can get negative 4 so when you put negative 4 there negative 4 plus 1 will get negative 3 so that negative 3 I will not write it I will just write it sign there and then uh, when I put negative 4 there negative 4 plus 2 I'm getting negative 2 so I'll write the negative there instead of writing negative 2 and then even there negative 4 plus 3 I'll get negative 1 so I'll write my negative there so when I multiply negative times negative is positive positive times negative is negative so is a negative number uh, less than 0 yes so this part will be accepted and then we move on we move on we say let's try this part let's get any number that is accept i mean let's try to get any number uh, between negative 3 and negative 2 can even get negative 2.5 negative 2.5 so when you say negative 2.5 plus 1, we'll get a negative number. Negative 2.5 plus 2, we'll get negative 0 0.5. So this is also a negative number. And then negative 2.5 plus 3, we'll get a positive uh, answer there. When you multiply the 2, you're going to get, you're going to get a positive. 
negative times negative positive positive times positive is positive is a positive number less than zero no let's try any number between negative two and negative one we can get negative 1.5 so negative 1.5 plus uh, one you get a negative number there so negative 1.5 plus 2 you get a positive uh, number there and then let's try this part again negative 1.5 plus 3 you get a positive number so when you multiply the three uh, signs there you get the negative as your answer is the negative number less than zero yes so also get that point let's try the last part this side let's get any number greater than negative one can even get a zero we put a zero there zero plus one we get a positive and then zero plus two we get a positive two zero plus three we get a positive three so when you multiply the three uh, signs there you still get a positive is a positive number less than zero no so meaning the range of values of x that we need uh, so we can say x is there for equal to you can use um, uh, what's this interval notation so this part is accepted x is less than negative three meaning we're dealing with negative numbers there from negative infinity up to uh, negative three then you add the two sets this set and this one here th these two interval sets so here we have from negative 2 uh, to negative 1. So this is the range of values that is needed for you. So let's quickly move on to question 12. So this is question 11 from Story Sheet 4. Let's now solve question 12.